This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Hing.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to Transformation with Tara Sutphin. Tara Sutphin is the author of Blame It on Your Past Lives and Soul Agreements. Three audio CD series, metaphysical meditations, sourcing series, and sleep programming. Tara has also collaborated with Emmy Award winning Shane Stanley and Marla Maples on numerous DVDs. Tara Sutphin is a master in the psychic sciences. If you'd like to find out more about Tara's work, upcoming seminars, and meditations to help you fulfill your dreams, visit her website at tarasutphin.com. Welcome to Transformations with Tara. This is Tara Sutton. Happy full moon, everyone. Yeah, it is a beautiful strawberry moon today. And I'm interviewing the indie pop duo, Jenny Electric, who is part of Dynasty Electric. And it's a blur between the lines of DJ and rock band with their unique fusion of electronic music and psych pop. And they've earned critical praise. And their music has been featured on television and film. And they've toured the world. Hey, welcome, Jenny. Good morning, Tara. Happy Strawberry Moon to you. I know. It is so cool that we are talking on the full moon this morning. It just culminated just a few hours ago. So it's amazing. We're still in it. Yeah. I actually woke up, I think, at exactly the moment it was uh, fully culminated um, just by coincidence. So that was that was cool. Um, it really is such an honor to be on your show today. Um, I'm a huge fan of your work and um, have a lot of admiration for you. So thank you so much for having us. And I have Seth here, the other half of Dynasty Electric, for at least part of the time. Uh, say hello, Seth. Good morning. Happy full moon. Hey, it's nice to meet you over the radio, Seth. Yeah. Nice to meet you, too. Right. Awesome. So tell me, how did the band start? You want to take this one, Seth? You'll be here for a minute. Uh, Well, I was playing saxophone. I was a jazz saxophonist in New York City, and I was looking to start a new band. And I was out and about town on a a Tuesday night. Uh, I was looking to meet a friend at a bar and my friend was late and Jenny was the bartender and we fell into this metaphysical really deep conversation right off the bat and we just had this amazing connection uh where we just immediately just fell into uh just a great conversation and we talked about music and travel and magic and literature and uh my friend ended up showing up but I uh I just really had just fallen in love with Jenny at the bartender and soon after, we got together and started the band, and this was now 15 years ago. Oh, my gosh. That is so cool. Thank you. What was really cool about it is that, by coincidence, we were both taking trips to Asia within weeks of each other. He was on his way to Japan. I was to China. I had just started uh, getting into music again. I was playing bass, and he was looking for a bass player. And we were both reading the same book at the time, uh, The Unbearable Lightness of Being. So Mm -hmm. it's just a lot of interesting coincidences. Those are just a few of them, but a lot of synchronicity. And I was also told a few weeks prior to meeting him that I would meet him, and and a psychic described him perfectly to me, his uh, physical features and other aspects. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, so it's very, it it sounds like it was so destined because the guy was late and, you know, there's Jenny and Jenny is such a light. Oh my gosh. I totally see where (laughs) Seth was drawn and that was it. (laughs) I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now, so originally are you, you're both from back East, right? In the United States. Oh, that's another interesting coincidence is uh, we met in New York City, um, and we li- we both lived in Brooklyn and Williamsburg for years, but, and uh, we were actually both from Massachusetts, and we didn't realize that till later, and so we're from like a couple hours distance 
uh, he says from Northampton, I'm from Westport, but we, we met in New York and later went back to Massachusetts. I love it. So, so how long have you been in LA and what, what, um, you just have a new album, correct? Well, you know, actually we have a long history with LA. We had come out here, uh, maybe 12 years ago on a tour. And at the time, uh, as I was mentioning, I was playing jazz saxophone and Jenny was playing the bass and we had a drummer in the band. And after our show, we actually went to visit Venice Beach. We're actually living in Venice, California now. And while we were at Venice Beach that day, Jenny actually mentioned to me, uh, you know, I, I can also sing and uh, we should really start writing some songs with some vocals. And that was really the beginning of the the, the band in the, in the form that it is today that uh, it really kind of started here in L.A. that uh, on that afternoon. And so then after being in New York for uh, about 12 years where we threw great parties and we had a great experience, New York City kind of changed and we decided to uh, that we wanted to change as well. So uh, we took a cross-country journey. It was an amazing, magical experience. Uh, actually, we had an amazing full moon experience in Arkansas where we were at a mountain lake uh, during the full moon camping. And we played our singing bowls to the full moon, and it was a com totally an out-of-body experience. Uh, uh, it was really amazing. Um, and then we made it out to Los Angeles. Uh, we arrived about a year or two ago, and we've just been having a fantastic experience. And during that uh, trip, that cross-country trip from New York to Los Angeles, which had a, a significant uh, detour into Mexico as well, that was the time where we wrote our most recent album, Land of Dreams. Yeah, it's beautiful. All your photography, do you guys do your photography yourself? Uh, we have worked with a number of different amazing photographers over the years, but we've definitely done a lot of it ourselves as well, yes. Oh, my God, it's so beautiful. Yeah, Thank and I you. love I that. Love that photo of you two together. Oh, my God. It's oh, beautiful. that was actually done by Jason Sheldon. He's a really well-known, like, um, rock photographer and he's taken incredible pictures of many amazing people so that was really great to be able to work with him yeah i mean they're just uh, such a it, it, you know i mean there's it, it's like your souls come out onto the photo it's incredible well, that that's really that's why it was so great to work with him that really is his specialty to really we be able to bring out the essence of a person and have that come through on film. So, yeah, he's he's amazing at that. And, uh, yeah, this photo has come up time and time again. People always love it. And um, it's been featured in many places, I think, because of what you said. There's really, like, an essence in it. Mm, yeah, love it. Love it. So tell me about Land of Dreams. Well, I have a couple comments on our trip that, that Seth has just uh, said. Um, one is that, just an interesting fact, because we were in Arkansas the night of that eclipse and, and playing our bowls. Oh, my I gosh. It was an eclipse, too. I love oh, it. It was an eclipse. And we were over, like, this lake watching the entire eclipse. And I was playing my handheld crystal singing bowl and uh, given to us by our, our energy medicine teacher. And Seth was playing my Tibetan bowl given to us by a medicine man. And so we're both playing these together and they're making these incredible tones and we're watching the eclipse as, as that's happening. And so that, that was amazing. Um, but I found out recently that the largest single deposit of quartz crystal, it's like 30 miles wide or something, is in Arkansas. Did you know that? Oh, no. And so this is where you guys were? You know, somewhere in the vicinity of that. Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. That is so there's fun. A, there's definitely a magical, mystical feel to Arkansas. It was really our kind of one of our only experiences uh, in Arkansas, but it was really uh, very magical. There were also was a, a monarch butterfly migration occurring just as we were visiting. And so we were admiring, a, you know, there's maybe about 100 or 200 monarch butterflies on a, a large bush by this lake we were staying at. And a local actually came down, uh, kind of a mysterious guy, uh, pulled up next to us, and we were all admiring the butterflies. And he was very friendly, and he introduced himself. His name is Tom York, uh, no relation to the singer from Radiohead, but uh, <laughs> such a friendly guy. 
So when he left, he noticed that we didn't have any firewood in our camp. And without saying anything, he actually drove back to his house, filled up the back of his pickup truck with wood for us, drove back to our campsite and just said, oh, I, I noticed you didn't have any firewood. And I, I just wanted to, you guys have a fire tonight while you're watching the eclipse. He built it. Uh, and it was such a, uh, it was such a beautiful guy. Uh, there's such a, there's really is a magic there in Arkansas. Uh, we hope to visit again. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was amazing. Um, there were so many amazing parts of that trip, but I think um, the thing that comes to mind is that leading up to us arriving in Los Angeles, we really were a, a bit of a part of this like tiny house movement, live in your van movement, and just sort of be free spirited and uh, not pay rent, but live in different amazing places and make music and experience things. So for several years, we were more or less on the road leading up to um, making roots here in LA. And that includes six months of being um, in Baja in the San Jose del Cabo area. So yeah, it's been an interesting journey leaving New York and coming here. It took a few years actually. Yeah, but it sounds like you were on the adventure. And yeah, you have so much to write about and so many beautiful experiences, like just the kindness of others. You know, I, I for years kept this uh, book next to my, the side of my bed called The Kindness of Strangers. It's by Mike McIntyre. And he, oh, yeah, and he had gone off on this journey. He's a journalist out of San Francisco and he'd gone uh, on this journey with one penny in his pocket and hitchhiking across America. And so he was going to see how kind he was writing about how kind people are. And it was really wow. good book. It's a book that you can just open a page because you're going to laugh because it's so like, oh, my God, he's in so many weird predicaments. So many. Oh, it's amazing. It's just amazing to to really take the journey across the country. And actually, this included Mexico and Canada, too. So it was all of North America that we were traveling around, which was so incredible. And you really do meet great people yes. everywhere. This planet is just filled with beautiful people. Everywhere you go, you find kindness and compassion and love. Uh, and, you know, one of our good friends that we met in Mexico, he's a traveler. He's always traveling all around the world. And, and he, his philosophy is he actually prefers to travel without money. Uh, because he loves to see this kindness. He loves to see this generosity that people have for a traveler. And that if, if he did have money, you know, he maybe he would stay in a hotel or, you know, kind of go a more conventional route. And when you don't have any money in your pocket, you do end up befriending a stranger, maybe staying with somebody you don't know, uh, somebody that makes you dinner. You have these beautiful experiences, which if you did have the money, you would just completely miss. Uh, so it's really interesting. Uh, I, that book that you're telling us about sounds really fascinating. Yeah, Kindness yeah. of Strangers. I mean, really, it's one of my very favorite books. Uh, but I I kept it next to my bed for years just so I could. And I would now, but, you know, and, yeah, I I, I don't have really much space right now in, in a couple of my houses. So, you know, I, I keep it, keep it, uh, you know, so I can find things. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I haven't put it out. But I just love this book, really. Really, I just love it. Well, then I think we will probably pick up a copy. It sounds really inspiring. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's great. Yeah, that and, you know, I've been telling everybody to read um, Mutant Message Down Under because it was by Marlo Morgan, and that's uh, the Aborigine story. In, and they uh... don't – they live completely off the land, and that is just an incredible – story just I mean you're riveted by by reading about this woman who's just completely and utterly thrown into this experience and her writing about it is just hysterical you know you can't you can barely lift your eyes from the book it's incredible I mean they have no ecological footprint at all nothing that these people do like affects the environment in a detrimental way they're living in peace with earth you know Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's an incredible, I, I think that's incredible. Beautiful. Yeah. That's everything amazing. is done in a conscious thought process. Yeah. yeah. I know. It's a, it's amazing. It's amazing. It just gives food for thought for our Western mm -hmm. culture, you know, that we, 
you know, don't, you know, there, there's a, 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 a sense of being at one with nature and the earth that makes you feel so much better when you're not, yes. you know, trying to take from other people all the time, I guess. You know, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure like exactly you, what the formula, but, you know. Well, I feel like you're in the, in the city. I, I'm always trying. Every day I feel like I'm trying to think of new ways to, you know, live more consciously and, uh, you know, really be respectful of the things I'm using and not ever take on anything that doesn't have a really significant meaning to me and doesn't produce a lot of weight. So it's something I feel like we've always been thinking a lot about. And also we're vegetarians too. So it kind of extends to like the animals and um, just everything in general. But I also feel that part of our balance as human beings is to spend time fully immersed in nature out of a city environment, because from what I understand, it really affects uh you know, the expansion of even your, your energetic fields and your aura that it becomes a little more compacted in the city just because there's so much energy around. Whereas in nature, you can just fully expand and just be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the end, you know, it's, it's, that's an interesting uh, fact, you know, cause I have a ranch and and uh, I have my Brazilian dog up there right now who came from um, the Temple of John of God. And she, oh, um, <laughs> you didn't know this? Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a dog that came from uh, the Casa in Brazil. Oh, and so God, she's a so real, amazing. yeah, she's really super amazing. And I wanted to make her a service dog, but she's just had so much fun. I mean, she runs and runs and runs around this property, right? So she's been, she's been eating all the rattlesnake eggs. She has this whole thing where the eggs have got to go. And so she digs up these eggs and you watch her and she's, she's digging up rattlesnake eggs. And it's like, oh my gosh, you know, she's getting rid of all the rattlesnakes. Yeah. Wow. And just, she's such a protector in such a different, different, higher ele, elemental way. Yeah. Really, that's amazing. So interesting. Oh yeah, I, I can't know. wait to see her. I didn't even know. That's oh so yeah, cool. yeah. And she like talks. Uh, she never growls. She does this like alien speak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's really funny. Uh, she's really. What funny. kind of dog is she? Her? Well, we don't really know. I call her a Bra Brazilian okay. foxhound because <laughs> she's definitely yeah. probably has some Jack Russell in her. Because she she's very busy. She's a busy dog, so she oh. she can run so fast, and so so she's some kind of Brazilian foxhound. <laughs> so you're saying that she just you don't even want to necessarily bring her here to LA. You just want her to be free up at the ranch, right? So she's been she's been having so much fun. Yeah, I love her having, you know, just just her life and she loves my other dogs i have two other dogs i have a french bulldog and a another oh, that's amazing so. yeah i i totally agree with you i mean we love dogs as well i don't have one here because we're currently in an apartment mm -hmm. for the moment but i i feel like when i do have i want the dog to be able to have a yard and and some you know ability to run around freely so that's why I don't have, I love them so much, but I'm waiting till I have a place where they can have freedom, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's okay. You know, I mean, I, there's, you know, so many wonderful dogs in the world, but, but uh, yeah, so she, it was just interesting that she's been doing this, you know, she's yeah. a, kind of a sentinel in her own way and has greeted, you know, a thousands and thousands a week that, you know, people, uh, in Brazil. And the only reason I really took her out of there is because, uh, she's living kind of, people don't know they come in and they don't really know that the dogs, you know, that there's 2,000 to 4,000 people coming in a week and the dogs aren't really cared for, you know, just certain little areas, uh, feed the dogs. And so who knows who gets fed and who doesn't and the har yeah. hierarchy of all of it, you know, <laughs> and, and who gives a cookie and who gives a french fry you know but her, so I just gave her a stable life she really wanted to be sleeping on something soft 
And so I thought, well, if I bring her home, she can you know, sleep on the couch. <laughs> she can do whatever medicine. she wants. Yeah. She's a medicine dog. Yeah. And then the first night I ever let her sleep on my bed, she, that I had these cylinders of light. And the light was on and the cylinders of light were above my bed. So the angels of light came in to bless bless her and be around her. Wow, yeah, it was incredible. <laughs> She's really magical. Yeah, super magical. Amazing. I love this. I can't wait to meet her. Yeah. So, so tell me, so what kind of dates do you guys have upcoming? Yeah, actually, so we're part of this festival happening next Saturday here in Los Angeles. It's actually a, a free event at the Los Angeles State Historic Park, which is um, kind of in between sort of downtown Chinatown, like sort of on the edge over there. And it's an all-day event. It's from 10 a.m., I think, to like 6 or 7. And the whole point of the event is this mass meditation at 2 p.m. Um, so basically everyone's coming together to to meditate, to raise the vibration here and consciousness of Los Angeles, but it will also be streamed out online as well. So there's amazing uh, speakers and yoga teachers and some sound healing and different performances and art. And it's being put on by Disclosure Fest. And like I said, it's free and it's all day. And it's a, you know, family event and, we're really happy to be part of it. They're a nonprofit organization and they have, they've been doing tree plantings and beach cleanups and all sorts of things. And, you know, putting together a festival, um, you know, from a nonprofit perspective is a big undertaking. And I think it's just gaining steam and attracting a lot of ten attention right now. So it's so great that people are so interested in, in being a part of it. Um, but Dynasty Electric plays at, at about 3.30 after the meditation. We have a set that's sort of a combination of some sound healing and, and some of our music. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Now, are you, yeah. um, so you'll announce it where exactly it is, right? So they can go yeah. into your Facebook page or onto your website? Yes, it's actually on our Facebook page. There's a Facebook invite and it's also on the website. But specifically, Los Angeles State Historic Park is 1245 North Spring Street near downtown. Okay. So what is that address again so people can write it down? Thank you. It's 1245 North Spring Street near downtown Los Angeles. It's kind of in the shadow yeah, of and Dodger well, Stadium. Okay, in the shadow of Dodger Stadium. Okay. But 1245, so you can remember that. Going in about 1245 is probably when they're going to start the meditation, right? And then you guys are going to be playing at 330? The meditation yeah. will be at 2 p.m. exactly and also live streamed at that time. So if anyone wants to, the, the, the website is actually DisclosureFest.com. So Disclosure, D-I-S-C-L-O-S-U-R-E, Fest.com. And you can stream live there too, even if you can't make it to the actual meditation, but it'll be 2 p.m. And we, uh, Dynasty Electric performs around 3.30. Um, okay. That. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I um, love that. I'm excited. Really, we're really excited to be a part of it. And um, what's so cool is we're also helping to create a crystal grid on the stage with crystals from Mystic Journey. So oh, we're going to be bringing beautiful. some amethyst and quartz and citrine and just creating, you know, this beautiful energy grid for the meditation and some of the performances and um, also promoting the new Mystic Journey space that's opening during. Right. During the right. Yeah. I'm so excited. The new space. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, my God. I cannot wait for you to see it, Tara. It is absolutely amazing and a lot of the crystals are now coming in from brazil oh my and, god um, they're incredible and as you know the the owner jeff siegel he went down to brazil he's you know very good friends with these uh family mine owners they're you know all family businesses and they have deep respect and love for you know these these elemental 
beings, the crystals. And so now there's a bunch up here and we're unpacking, but it's this beautiful crystal gallery um, that, that's going to also include some amazing visionary art. It will be an art gallery too. And then the other half of the space is a new meditation, yoga, um, and basically community space for different workshops and, and sound healing and, and, and things like that. We have also, actually, I personally created a um, color light therapy room that will have a, a, a water fountain, a waterfall, and uh, two quartz crystals. And it's also fully light responsive so that you can do your energy medicine sessions uh, with color therapy. Oh, nice. That's so cool, Jenny. I can't wait to try that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you'll, yes. you'll come see it. Actually, Tara, Seth is, um, I'm here for the rest of the interview, but Seth is headed out. He just wants to say see you later. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Tara. I know. It's so great to meet you, and I hope to meet you in person here pretty soon. And thank you for being on the radio today. Well, thank you so much. I look forward to meeting you in person, too. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Happy full moon. Yes, happy full moon. Um, yeah. Also, Tara, there's a beautiful garden with like a Buddha fountain and a Siwa fountain and these gorgeous wisterias I've been watering. And we made a little uh, Moroccan lounge in the loft area. So it's a oh. super cool space. Oh, well, you know, Jeff, he has such a cool touch. You know, he's yeah. he's he's amazing. Love Jeff. I mean, really, yeah. I mean, he picks the coolest, most wonderful uh, crystals, and everybody, they're for sale. I mean, they are really spectacular. He yeah. he really does make make the grade, I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. and this will be even on another level uh, for Jeff, yeah. too. So it's really exciting. So officially, it opens uh, Mystic Journey. It's Mystic Journey. Uh, yoga, meditation, and crystal gallery, and it opens June 24th for classes, and it's at 1702 Lincoln Boulevard, and right on the boulevard. And um, the grand opening party, I think, is uh, July 15th, but we open for classes on June 24th. Oh, awesome! Awesome. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, we're gonna have a. It'll be a fun party with everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, it's gonna be great. Hmm. And yeah. also to be able to practice like the meditation and, and yoga and, you know, women's circles and full moon ceremonies with these large crystals is, is amazing. I, you know, I don't even know if there's other spaces here in L.A. that are doing it quite in that way. So it's this unique experience of being able oh, to. Oh, yeah. Now, I think that, that Jeff really, he chooses so well. I mean, the decor the uh, product, the uh, beauty, uh, it's amazing. It is. I really, I always appreciate everything. Yeah, the well, people, so, all the people so around are cute. amazing. Yeah, we're, I'm so happy to, to be a part there. of everybody's lives there. Hmm? I know, and um, it's and just great to have you there doing uh, the readings for people and, and everything else you do uh in your sessions, you're so powerful, and I was so happy when I heard you were uh, coming to be part of the store. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Jeff asked me, so it was like really perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Mm. Um, yeah, so everyone come June 24th and uh, come July 15th too. Yes, July 15th probably would be really amazing to start and then yeah and i'm sure that we'll have up a, a big amazing schedule yeah very cool yeah yeah so i want to hear more about what you're doing with i mean how did you get into music in the beginning you know like did you take lessons when you were a child and or did you start when you were a teenager oh I mean, yeah i i actually started being interested in music pretty young. I mean, I remember like singing and dancing for my family as early as like three and four. And my mom said we used to have these like Disney, they were tapes at the time, <laughs> Disney tapes of mm -hmm. just uh, different characters uh, sort of 
acting out like Bambi, and then there would be songs in there. And she said I would memorize the entire thing verbatim with all the voices and all the songs at like four years old. So I think oh my God. I always sort of been interested <laughs> in that. Um, but I actually started playing like keyboards and guitar and different instruments when I was 12. And then a couple years later, I started singing in the choir with a couple of girlfriends with three other girls and they were all really into the Beatles music and so we just started singing some of the Beatles songs to really practice harmonies because there's just such great harmony in that music and we ended up just forming a band to to play covers of, of some of these songs and I and I got the the lead guitar part sort of, I guess, the George Harrison part. And then uh, within like six months, we had sent this audition tape to England for this this big Beatles festival that they have. And we got selected. And so I did a tour in England when I was like 16. Of You know, eventually we played other types of music as well, but we started with the Beatles. And so, and then we did all these festivals here in the U.S. So I've been playing large shows since I was like 16, 15 and 16. Oh, how fun. How fun. Yeah. And were, were your parents, were they Beatles fans? Yeah. I mean, my father was a bit of a DJ mm -hmm. um, when he was younger. And so he had a lot of the original records. Yeah. And a, a bunch of other amazing records as well. But he definitely played. Again, it was just sort of meeting these friends. And, you know, just becoming interested. And I guess what it was is, like, how diverse the music, the Beatles music is, and then how much of a journey they went on um, uh, psychologically, but also spiritually through their mm -hmm. whole, like, LSD journey and then transcending that and be becoming, uh, you know, entering this really spiritual realm. And, you know, the vibrations of just reaching so many people and having so many people respond and be lifted by music, you know, because it was sound healing. It's all sound healing, really, when the vibration lifts you like that. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that it's like energy medicine? I mean, it's so interesting because the concept of sound healing is, is very much exploding right now there's a there's a lot of interest in it i mean it's been around for many years well for thousands of years but even in in modern times it's been around but now people are really starting to tune in to how it's helpful and feeling this sense of you know rejuvenation and calm after a sound bath i feel like especially you know not everyone is is able to have like the discipline or focus to sit there in silent meditation that can be can be hard sometimes whereas a, a sound bath is more experiential but i first um was exposed to you know people playing singing bowls and and using sound as medicine in in new york city probably about 10 years ago or so and then by chance when Seth and I were, were both living back in Massachusetts for a couple of years we were introduced to this um, energy medicine practitioner uh, her name's Lisa Murphy and she has a center called Fairhaven Healing Arts Center in Massachusetts and she was hiring Seth and I to come to her yurt and basically record some of her instruments and also her mantras. And then we ended up also making her sort of like instructional videos for her students of what an energy, a private energy medicine session looks like. So just because we, we ended up spending, and it, also she sent us to uh, the mountains of North Carolina to open this cabin for her, which was sort of the outpost for her new retreat center. So we literally spent a year deeply immersed in the practice of energy medicine and sound as healing and, uh, um, you know, just the energy bodies and, and how that all looks and, and plays into our overall health, physical, mental, and spiritual. So it was almost by accident. So it was like I was hired to learn energy medicine. But anyway, she's an incredible 
um, practitioner and she's helped so many people with things, um, you know, different ailments when they were told that, you know, there were no options, like people with rare blood diseases and cancers and uh, MS. Uh, she has a few people who are completely symptom-free that worked with her for a bit. She was also helping, like, crack babies born addicted with, uh, you know, certain addictions. And, Sound um, healing. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, so we were like, wow, like, how is, and she most, she uses, you know, a little bit of massage and energy work, but mostly her modality is sound, and I'm like, how is the sound just helping people in such profound ways, so we became really interested in, you know, just in the work, and, um, you know, we always kind of had, like, I mean, I play theremin in Dynasty Electric, and I don't play it in the traditional way of, you know, actually playing like an orchestra piece, I play it through a delay pedal. So it has more of like this toning where I'm like sweeping up to to different notes and sort of matching things uh, in our electronics or that Seth plays on the sax. So it almost has like a psychedelic feel, but I'm just like honing in on these tones. And I had been told many times after performances that it was very transformative for people who were in, you know, in the room. So like I said, you know, I would think so. Yeah. What? I would think so because, you know, they've done all that Alzheimer's research where, um, you know, older people and rest homes and stuff, they come in and they play certain music and then all of a sudden they remember things and they talk and they haven't talked for years and, and things like that, you know, stroke victims and stuff that they, they all of a sudden you bring in their generation of music and they come alive. And the, but the minute it goes off, they're back to where their vegetative state was. It's yeah. interesting. It's really interesting about how our cellular, cellular memory maybe is and how, um, and maybe it, it has to do with something with regenerating our cells. If we used it that way, of course, I'm into it's... all of it all the time. You know, we're into the cutting edge of, of, yeah, if it's, if it's out there, it's, you know, medicine for the soul, if nothing else. Yeah. I mean, that is the whole idea about sound. You're totally right. It's affecting us on a, you know, on a cellular level. That's the theory behind it. And it's really being uh, talked about a lot in scientific circles as well. You know, new, new things keep coming up that really um, support that sound is healing in this way. And, you know, if we're all light and sound, you know, light, when light when light slows down, when the wavelength slows down, it becomes a sound. And when the wavelength of sound slows down, it, it essentially becomes a physical object. So everything is sort of on this continuum of being sort of light, sound, you know, physical. And so, yeah, in that sense, it actually makes perfect, it has perfect scientific viability, as well as being something, an ancient knowledge that's been talked about for many thousands of years as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm well in Atlantis. I know that, uh, you know, the theory is that Atlantis used sound healing for, you know, for everything. Now, yeah, sound now, and light. yeah I was in Australia and um, they hooked up to the plants, um, a biofeedback machine where the plants can actually yes. play music with. And yes. so they, they give a little water and then, you know, uh, you just say, oh, will you play me something? And if they like you, they, you know, like the vibration of you, they start playing the piano or the keyboard. Yes. And it's yes, so yes. beautiful. It's beautiful. Yes, and that's how they're I, communicating. I love this. I love this, like, real reminder that we are surrounded by all these sentient beings and that everything is full of life and, and we're, you know, we're a part of this like beautiful creation and the plants are alive just as much as we are just in a different, you know, a different realm, a different uh, vibration almost, but they're there and they're very responsive. And I, I absolutely love plants, Tara. Like we grow a lot of plants in the apartment I can't wait to have a huge yard to grow everything because yeah. I have such an affinity with them and they always mm -hmm. have. Um, and I have a friend doing this biofeedback with the plants as well. So I'm a, a little bit familiar with, with how that works, but it's, it's so interesting. 
Oh my gosh. I know. And then, you know, um, well, with those plants, it was really interesting too, that if somebody plays music, they actually copy the music. They can copy it. Wow. Uh, it's incredible. Yeah, they go along with they you want and to copy play it. Along with what you're doing, yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean it was it was really um eye opening. I mean I, I was enchanted. Wow, that's incredible. I, mm. I love this so much. You know, mm-hmm. speaking of like I know I wanted to actually talk with you a little bit about past lives because I know you you do some things with that. And um, I recently, I'd never had any experiences previously, but because you brought up Atlantis, it made me think of it. But several weeks ago, um, this amazing medium psychic woman that I know uh, happened to uh, contact me and say, you know, I got a download of information for you regarding your past lives. And I went over and she handed me like two pages uh, notebook pages full of like this information like spanning back to like the galaxies coming up to recently and I you know I haven't had any previous experience with anyone saying anything about um, my past lives so I'm just wondering like what what exactly is your work with past lives and and how do you think they play into our current life in terms of like what we're working through and, and karma and, and, and other things. Right. Well, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist. And so I believe that past yeah. lives, any sort of um, problem or, or upset, um, you know, is usually involves uh, past life as well as, you know, it can be this life, but, but usually it's deep seated fear or, um, I, I just say, you know how you get in scrapes with people or, or you know them right away. Like it sounds like you and Seth knew each other right away. Like you were, you, everything that you were doing was coming together. So syn- synchronicity, you know, was at such play that it just came together. But, but it was like the other side, you know, your contract, your, your predestiny of life came together and that's part of the the reincarnation contract is you're going to come together with people that you've known from a past life whether it's good or bad <laughs> so and it could be good for a long time and then goes bad <laughs> yeah right yeah. well it's a whole trajectory of experience but the medium had said that Seth and I actually have had five past lives together and that this one coming out west was a continuation of a previous one where we were, you know, Native American shamans and that we were using sound and crystals and, um, you know, uh, mantra type things and uh, herbs and other things to do healing ceremonies. And that they I would think that's true for you guys. Yeah. So, yeah, you, yeah like, because oh this is God, not a new are... thing. Yeah, this is not a new experiment for you. It's not. It's not. And for you, you to love said. nature so much and for, for you know, this is a, it's it's where you've been before. And so there's just, there's just, you know, like silver linings of that that come through it from a past life. And so it's really fun. Yeah, no, I'll have to, I'll have to regress you sometime and see. That would be amazing. You know, because I love. Yeah, it suss that out. I would love to be able to work with that tool because I know it is a tool when you have, you know, some kind of knowledge. It, you know, just that little bit of information actually made me feel better in the sense that I had been sort of thinking, you know, I'm from out east. I'm so far away from my family. What am I doing here? You know, <laughs> and for her to sort of say that, that there you know, was this very real purpose and this continuation, I think, gave me some sense of calm and peace that, you know, irrespective of, of how long I'm here, there's definitely a reason and something I'm working on and continuing and being here with Seth, that makes sense. So I think there is with the knowledge of some of this, um, just seeing how everything fits together and, and, and what the ultimate purpose, your soul contract, if, if that's what it's called, you know, is. Oh yeah. No, I know. Yeah, your soul contracts. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes you wonder, like, why am I, of all the places you could be in the world, like, 
you know, why aren't you living in Australia, for example? You know, why here as opposed to anywhere else? And why yeah. the people you're by? Like, you know, I think about these things because it's there's such infinite possibilities on, on where your path could take you. And I'm definitely a lover of experience and travel. And it's it's actually hard for me to settle in one place because I don't want to miss everywhere. Do you know? Yes. Yeah. Well, you have such an expansive uh, personality. I mean, your soul, like, I mean, you just light up, uh, uh, you know, half the city, really, Jenny. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, she smiles, everybody. She smiles. She has beautiful eyes. She, you know, you, you were very present with everyone that you talk to. It is beautiful. And I love this. I love that energy. I love when, when uh, life is like a, a, a magical mystery tour instead of being, uh, you know, the, a doubting who you are, the self-esteem issues. You know, it's no, take a step in and, you know, start to create the magic. And that's, Jenny is one of these people. Yeah. Well, it sounds like Seth. So yeah. Thank you, Tara. I really appreciate you recognizing the light in me. And as you know, you can only see what you are. So. Oh, <laughs> <It's> thank <amazing>. you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing about when you really give praise to someone. You know, you can't do that unless you're also that in some sense of it. So um, I really appreciate that. But also, like, reading your Strawberry Moon article, I really just liked how you were pointing out this this time period being about you know shedding any of these past beliefs and and like sort of moving towards your true liberation and I think um you know and also being um creating harmony for yourself and others and I think a big part of that piece is the real presence and I you know with other people and I definitely always make an effort to try to be as present and in, as conscious as possible in every interaction, even if I'm going down the street to the deli, because I think that is life. And it's important to truly see as much light in others as possible in every interaction, because this is your life. This is your day. This is your experience of reality, you know? So, yeah, it just uh, is, you know, I mean, it's where your feet are is the most important place that you're supposed to be at that moment. And how are you going to present yourself in the world? You know, I mean, we're sure there's a weird people and, and bad situations in the world. But, you know, I mean, even that, if we can just send so much grace to that and and so many where I say sentinels, you know, the archangels to just bless bless people and to get them out of their ruts and out of their problems. And it, it's the goodwill. If, if we can just get there, then we kind of like undo some of our own personal um, issues. Yeah. We get well, outside like of ourselves a little. The, end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. You know, it's like, it's, it's what you're putting out there is like cycling back it's just like the ability to be able to give freely in in a peaceful non-attached way but also to accept what's coming back to you so that you can be truly vibrant and fulfilled to then put back even more out you know more uh enthusiasm and and presence and love yeah and liberation you know i do feel that liberation is um you know, a lot of things. Liberation is really living a, a a life of meaning and not necessarily. It has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with um, other than, you know, we all need money. So you let it grace your life instead of fighting. You you grace everything in your life. Your health, you come yeah. into grace. Your money, you come into grace. Your relationships with others come into grace. You know, I mean, these are not going to grace come into grace with all people you're going to you know we all have issues that we have to uh, go around but we yeah. for the most part we live a life of of liberation and if we can if we can uh start thinking that way then life becomes that you know because everything is part of our viewpoint and our our uh, creating our reality yes yeah. 
And I remember now why I brought up your article, because I'm looking at it again now, is that you were saying that you really, um, that part of the way to sort of like manage your emotions and, and be in this like state of being where you can give and receive freely is to, you know, fill your head with meaningful information, to learn things, to grow, to expand. And I do feel that's such a powerful tactic because, I mean, it, an example in my life recently in, in helping to open this mystic journey, I've done some pretty deep study into crystals and minerals and gemstones and, and their origins and, and properties and um, also about, you know, color and light and, you know, different things in, in that realm. And I do feel that some of the times in this process that it's been stressful when I go back to, like, my books on crystals or, or, or color – um, then it just puts me in a place of learning something that can be of benefit to others rather than being in this uh, worried or, um, you know, self-sabotaging head space about things. You know, you're just mm -hmm. always adding to the field in that sense when you're learning and growing and taking on new information. Right, because the viewpoint can be, you know, anywhere that you are, is that there's too many people, there's, you know, that there's chemicals all around, that they're, you know, I mean, everybody can get into that kind of crazy headspace. Whereas if you just, okay, sit for just a moment, what is really going to happen if you just step into your magical self? Say, hey. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to raise a vibration here. I'm going to say nice things to people. I'm going to live on the whole idea that the acts of uh, random kindness are a beautiful thing. You know, I mean, I was in Australia um, and we had a little problem with the rental car. It seemed like it was going to die every five seconds. You know, <laughs> it was like the last from the, you know, it was sent to the, uh, we, we, we uh, flew into Kulangata, which is a smaller airport um, in, on the gold coast in Queensland. And so it was just this, you know, car that we weren't sure if it was going to really make it and we might be out, you know, completely stranded. So we went to the uh, rental car place to have it checked out. And, uh, you know, we're talking and stuff. And, and all of a sudden, you know, I, from under the desk, the, the uh, guy just brings that, would you like a cookie? You know, and so the, we, we, it was all a whole coffee and cookies time, which I just uh -huh. think is so funny. You know, I mean, we... Just everywhere you go, you know, people just fall into being randomly kind. And yeah, I think and I don't expect name. it. I just, you, we just put it out there. And so it's all of a sudden, you know, becomes a beautiful thing. <laughs> I, I think it's the true nature of people, Tara. I think, you know, when it comes down to it, like people's true nature, when, you know, when there aren't all the, of these other environmental um, or even past life factors that sort of, um, you know, put a shade over that. I think yes. the true nature is kindness and compassion. Yeah, compassion is the key to all enlightenment, actually. That's what my spirit guide says. Now, hey, I want everybody to be able to find you. It is oh, yes. dynastyelectric.com, but dynasty is D-Y. Go ahead. Dynasty. Yes, it's D-Y. N A S T Y and then electric is spelled E L E C T R I K. So everything is spelled how you would think. Dynasty Electric, but there's a K at the end, dot com. But you know right. what? If you search Dynasty Electric the other way, you'll find it too. Okay, good. And then you guys are doing this big event next weekend. That's next for disclosurefest.com. Exactly. Right. And, and you can buy the new C D. Or MP3. Yes. Do you have it as a CD, too, or just an MP3? Yes, we actually just received the CDs. They're digipack, and they're just gorgeous. So we have CDs, and you can uh, find out how to get those on our website. But we also have, like, flash drive memory sticks that have a Lemurian crystal with them. So if you don't have a CD player and you don't do CDs, which, of course, a lot of people don't right now. Not don't anymore, yeah. <laughs> No, you can also do, but a lot of people still do, and that's why we got it. And so you could get the CD 
or the flash drive, which you could reuse. And I think we're going to put probably four of our albums on that with um, a Lemurian crystal that, that comes with it. Oh, my gosh. That's beautiful. Hey, yeah. happy full moon, Jenny. And thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Tara. Thank you so much. Thank you for being so inspiring to me. You're such a light as well. And um, I, I'm i just so happy to to have this connection with you and to be able to grow and learn through uh, your knowledge and essence. So thank you so much. Well, as you say, it's a mirror. So thank you for being so gorgeous <laughs> and beautiful. Hey, blessings, everyone. Yeah. Happy full moon. Lots of love. The sun is out, so enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your time with Tara Sutphin. Find out more about Tara's work, upcoming seminars, and meditations to help you fulfill your dreams by visiting her website at tarasutphin.com. <laughs>